Welcome to uh, the last part, part number five of uh, the lecture Introduction to Management. I'm Ludmila Nagu. We're going to talk a little bit about managing quality, managing efficiency, and responsiveness to customers because you can be the best manager when it comes to dealing with people. However, let's not forget that without customers, no business will exist. Now, as I said, uh, we're going to talk about quality, efficiency, and responsiveness to customers, all of this being well known um, as operations management. To achieve superior quality, efficiency, responsiveness to customers, and innovation, the four building blocks of competitive advantage. Managers at all levels in an organization must adopt state-of-the-art management techniques and practices that give them more control over an organization's activities. If you take a good look in your notes, you'll see it will focus on the operations management techniques that managers can use to control and increase the quality of an organization's product, the efficiency of production, and the organization's responsiveness to customers. Managers should carefully analyze the link between responsiveness to customers and the organization's production system. Improving quality enables managers to better serve customers, raise prices, and lower production costs, which are um, three top things that a manager should be preoccupied with. Again, better serve customers, raise prices, and lower production costs because every organization is in business to do what? To make money. Improving efficiency require one or more of the following. TQM, flexible manufacturing, self-management work teams, and working cross-functionally. Let's talk for a minute about keeping the customer happy. Why should a company, what should a company do for angry customers? Of course, nobody wants to have angry customers. However, at times it happens. And how do you handle the, the situation? According to experts, a company should do just about anything it can to keep their customers happy or in case the customers are not satisfied, to bring them back to being satisfied with a company's products or services. Studies show customers tell twice as many people about bad experiences as good ones. So complainers left unhappy can send the company's image crashing. Simply listening to complaints boosts brand loyalty and the customer's tendency to buy again from the same company. One research firm calculated the return on company dollars invested in customers' complaints and inquiries. The average return for makers of consumer durables like washing machines and refrigerators was 100%. In other words, if manufacturers spend $1 million handling consumer complaints, they're going to get back two million dollars in benefits for banks it was as high as a hundred and seventy percent so pay attention taking care of customers does pay off at all levels now i do have another question for you related to to management why is it important for managers to pay close attention to their organization's production system if they wish to be responsive to their customers? Why do you think that is an important challenge in management? Well, let me help you. It is necessary for managers to, play, if to pay close attention to the organization's production system if they wish to be responsive to their customers. It is very important. The attributes of organizations outputs their quality, costs, and features are determined by the organization's production system. 
the ability of the or of an organization to satisfy demands of its customers derives from its production system by monitoring this system managers can find ways to improve quality while again keeping prices low as well as find ways to increase efficiency customers want what do they want they want value for money and an organization whose efficient production system creates high quality low cost products is best able to deliver the value that is an organization who's going to best do all those things now i do have a sentence for you and i uh, would like for you to think about it and think if um in your view if it's correct or not total customer service is the goal towards which most organizations should strive do you agree and if you do to what extent now let's talk about this for a minute without customers again organizations businesses would cease to exist it is important for managers to correctly identify and promote organizational strategies that respond to customers' needs. To this extent, the above statement is correct. Yet, organizations should not strive to have total customer service at the expense of other important factors in the production process. If an organization offers, offers a level of responsiveness that is more than that production system can profitably sustain, the entire system will suffer in terms of efficiency and cost effectiveness. A company that customizes every product to the unique demands on the, of the individual customers will likely see its cost structure become so high that the cost of production exceeds revenues. Also, efficiency will suffer because time and effort is required to customize and provide total customer service. To this extent, total customer service should be balanced with focus on efficiency and effectiveness. Now pay close attention because those two terms keep appearing again and again in our lecture. Efficiency and effectiveness. Now let's um, think about this for a second. Over the past 20, 25 years or so, millions of workers and managers have lost their jobs they thought they were going to have until retirement. Managers at the top continue to make millions while many lower levels employees are now looking for work, rebuilding the retirement and even in their 60s as their organizations are downsized. This is a challenging ethical issue that has been present uh, for a while and uh, is going to continue to be present in our world. I would like for you to think of the ethical implications of cost cutting and downsizing and I emphasize on the ethical implications of this actions. Now we're going to talk about the management of innovation, product development, and entrepreneurship. In your notes, if you take a good look, we're going to talk about one aspect of innovation, developing new and better ways to make goods and services by means of operation management techniques, such as total quality management, just-in-time inventory systems, and process reengineering. We'll examine the actions managers can take to improve the ability of their organizations to be innovative, 
by developing new goods and services. Another building block of competitive advantage. And there is another term that yet keeps coming back and back. Competitive advantage. We're also going to discuss the relationship between technological change, production innovation, and competition. We'll examine the goals of product development efforts and explain several principles for structuring an organization's product development efforts to attain these goals. We will also examine the nature of entrepreneurship and discuss steps managers can take to promote entrepreneurship inside their organizations. Successful product development, because we are talking about innovation, product development, entrepreneurship. Successful product development requires managers to reduce development time and maximize the products fit with customer needs and to maximize, pro maximize product quality and manufacturability. Entrepreneurship is the mobilization of resources to take advantage of an opportunity to provide customers with new or improved goods or services. Now, I want you to listen to, to this because it's something that uh, a research that has been done over the, 10, the top 10 new products of all times. 350 research and development executives were polled by the new product development newsletter on, again, top 10 new products of all times. Now, think about what would your choices be for, for that, for top new products of all times. Now, I, when it comes to those particular executives, here are their choices. Number one, the wheel. Number two, bow and arrow. Number three, the telegraph. Number four, electric light. Number five, plow. Number six, steam engine. Number seven, the vaccine. Number eight, telephone. Number nine, paper. And number 10, flush toilet. All right. Now we're going to take a little look at, at an example of um, what I would like to call an entrepreneur ahead of his time. Listen to this example. 19th century England was not ready for Charles Babbage. The mathematician had already proven his ingenuity by inventing the speedometer, the cow catcher, and the first reliable life expectancy tables when his enthusiasm turned to the problem of calculations. His first machine, which was designed to calculate logarithms, was an intricate system of gears and cogs which he called the differential engine. No sooner has the differential engine been completed that Babbage proposed an expanded machine, one with a central mill for performing logical operations. He called it a store or memory to hold information and means to put information in and retrieve it. In short, all the elements of a modern computer. The analytical engine became his obsession. Along with his patron, Ada, the Countess of Lovelace, he worked for nearly 40 years to perfect it. Ada, Lord Byron's mathematically gifted daughter, wrote the initial set of instructions for the engine, the world's first computer program. When Babbage died in 1871, all he had to show of his machine were thousands of sketches. The machine was never built. In order to perform the intricate calculations he developed, the engine's part had to be machined to precise tolerances. No craftsman of his age could do so. If it has been built, 
it would have been as big as a football field and would have required no more than less than half a dozen locomotives engines to power it. Now we're going to conclude our video lectures with, um, with another thought and question for you. Keeping up with the customers. We talked about keeping them satisfied. Now let's talk about keeping up with your customer. The product life cycle refers to the way demand for a product changes over time. Four stage, stages of demand can be identified. The embryonic stage through rapid growth into maturity and fi finally decline. The length of a product life cycle is the length of time from when a product is first introduced to the time when demand falls significantly. Example of industries with short life cycles are personal computers, semiconductors, and disk drives. Examples of industries with long product life cycles are the steel and electricity industries. In short, product life cycle technological changes uh, are very rapid. Products can become technological obsolete about, um, let's say, a year, a year and a half after introduction. In industries with long product cycles, technological changes um, are very slow. Now, this concludes our lecture series on introduction to management. Again, please check your notes and our discussions, and you will find many, many more details and many, many more, um, more examples to help you in the study of uh, management.